Hello, 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 hello. All praise and glory goes to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. All praise and glory goes to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Hallelujah. And please accept Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior. He died on the cross for your sins. He shed his precious blood for you. He was put on a tomb and rose on the third day. And he's knocking at the door of your heart. He wants to come and sup with you. Please let him in. Please let him in. Now I'm going to be reading Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. But I'm just going to read this one piece of Acts 17, Acts chapter 17, verse 11 first. Now the Beranians were more noble-minded than, <clears throat> than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if these teachings were true. And that's what you should do. When you get new teachings from anybody, from me or from some other person on you you hear rather online in person or wherever take it and take it to the Lord and pray about it and seek the seek the scriptures and examine them to see if it lines up if it doesn't line up with God's word then you probably know where it's going it's it's deceitful and lies and you always should always pray about it as well and pray before you read God's holy word for you want to hear the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit is your teacher. The Holy Spirit guides you and leads you to wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And I just got to open the door for a second to let Josette out. All right, Josette. You can go out. That Josette's my cat. Anyway, <clears throat> let's begin. Preaching Christ at Thessalonica is the title. Now, they had passed through Anima and Apollos and Apollonia, and came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, went to them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, saying, This Jesus, whom I preach to you, is the Christ. Some of them were persuaded. And great multitude of devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. But the Jews, who were not persuaded, became envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace, and gathered a mob, set up the city in an uproar, and attacked the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. But they did not find them but dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Jason has harbored them, and these are all acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying there is another king, Jesus. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. So when they had taken security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that by the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came there also and immediately stirred up the crowds. Then immediately the brethren sent Paul away to go to the sea, but both Silas and Timothy remained there. So those who conducted Paul brought him to Athens. And, they, and receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now when Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him, when he saw the city was given over to idols. Therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the, with the Gentile worshippers, and, and in the marketplace, daily with those who happened to be there. Then a certain Epicurean and Stotic philosophers encountered him, and some said, What does this babbler want to say? Others said, He seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods, because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. 
And and they took him and brought him to Aeropascus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine is of which you speak. For you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore we want to know what these things mean. For all the for all the Athenians and for the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you proclaim without knowing him, I proclaim to you, God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. He has made from one blood of every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For him we live and move and have our being, for in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. We are the offspring of God. Remember, God created Adam from the dust in his own likeness. Don't forget that. And it's not Adam and Eve together. They're creating the likeness of God. And anyone who tells you that we are created by the hands of aliens is a lie. Because that lie is going on all over the place. I feel brought that brought up to my spirit. I used to, went back years ago when I was in high school, I remember hearing about documentaries, I think it was by the History Channel, stating, you know, talking about ancient aliens and everything. And they stated in those videos that they believed that we were created by aliens. At that time, I started believing it. I didn't know God that well. I didn't At that time period, I didn't read God's Holy Word either. I did pray, I will admit. I did pray, but I didn't. I was wishy-washy. I was a teenager, and I didn't, I didn't know the truth. But I soon realized that that was probably a bunch of lies, and it sounded fishy to me as time went on. And they're pushing that agenda again. Big time now. Really big time. Um, they're talking about aliens all over the place. Everywhere. And people are talking about it. And people are, are starting to think, you know, all kinds of things. Aliens are not what you think they are. If you think they're extraterrestrials from some faraway planet like um, Pluto or Uranus or Neptune or something. No. They're interdimensional beings. They're angels, demons, Satan himself, Nephilim, and yes, they're ancient. They've been they've been around since they've been around for a long time. They've been here since before the flood. They're what they're what's corrupted the earth. If you read um, the book of Genesis, beginning of the book of Genesis, especially the book of Enoch, it goes into graphic detail about them, and Jasher does to a certain degree as well. But take this all up to the Lord in prayer. And ask God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But even Alistair Crowley's drawing, God had said, had me see a video one time, and his drawing of his um, little spiritual friend thing looked very, very familiar to aliens, including to this other video that later on God had me led me to years later after that, where it was a woman said she, her and her husband were kidnapped by extraterrestrials, and she had made um, back in I think she was kidnapped back in the 70s by extraterrestrials and she had made a, a, a statue, you know, a bust, you know, a head bust of the alien and the alien bust was the exact replica of Aleister Crowley's um, 
spiritual demonic thing that he was he was talking to and having a having some type of relationship with. Exact same thing. It was unbelievable. And that woman didn't know any. It was obvious that woman knew nothing about Alistair Crowley or anything. And she had went into went into an over an hour video describing her her meeting with those beings and everything else. But yeah, they're not our friends. There are no good uh, demons, fallen angels, nephilim. They're no good at all. All evil, all bad. Have nothing to do with them, and don't go out of your way to try to uh, connect with them or have any 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 relationship with them. They're just pure evil. It's basically like having a relationship with the devil. But take this all up to the Lord in prayer, and let's continue. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped shaped by art and man's devising. That's right. We shouldn't. Um, think that the divine nature is anything like anything that's that's made in this world. It's physically here, like the, this this desk I'm touching with my fingers. That's it's just a piece of wood or whatever it's made out of. Um, it's it's not it's not anything like divine nature because the divine nature is God and he's, and he's spirit, and you can't see spirit unless God has gifted you with the ability to do that to be a seer. But we shouldn't be worshipping objects, materialistic possessions, because they're only temporary and they're here for one minute and go on the next. And we shouldn't be worshipping um, God's creation, animals. You shouldn't be sitting there bowing down and praying to a tiger. Um, they're also God's creation as well. And it's not going to go anywhere and God's a jealous God. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. And if you do worship um, materialistic possessions, greed, money, yourself, or whatever you, you put before God, because whatever you put before God, you worship. So if you put your, your mother-in-law before God, you're worshiping your mother-in-law. And that, that's, that's an abomination to God. He gets jealous and he gets angry and does not like that. For God is a jealous God. If you put your job over God, you're worshiping your job more than God. Remember this. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And when they heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, while others said, We will hear you again on this matter. So Paul departed from, from among them. However, some men joined him and believed among the Dinonius, and the Arapagite, a woman named Damarius, and with others with them. Well, thank you for listening, and all praise and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. And I'll be back as the Lord leads.